Hi, this is Goggett, and it's time for a uh, uh, story time with Scoggett. This is a volume two, and uh, this one is called Texas Dirt Track Racer. Uh, give you a little bit of background here. Uh, the time was like, uh, I believe, 1982, and uh, a week before this, uh, me and my brother went to a, a, a dirt track racing here in, in uh, town. Uh, they had it on the outside of town. And they, uh, the track is, is made of dirt. If you're not familiar with dirt track racing, uh, the track is made of uh, dirt, like a kind of a sticky clay type. And it's, our, our track was like a quarter of a mile round wasn't like a half mile, like a half mile is a bigger one. But ours is a short track. It's like a short dirt track. And uh, me and my brother went and watched it, uh, the races, and uh, I kind of liked it. I liked the excitement and everything. So uh, anyway, the following week, uh, my brother calls me up and he tells me, he says, he says, you gotta come by my house and see what I got. He said, uh, he said, I got something and I paid a $50 bill for it. $50 now, he paid a $50 bill for this. Uh, I told him, I said, okay, I can uh, make it make it over there. So anyway, my brother uh, on one of the US highways, he owned a gas station. He owned a gas station, he ran the gas station, that's how he made his money. Right behind the gas station, he lived. He lived in a house, and now, now, right next to his house, he had his uh, metal barn. I know uh, everybody seemed like uh, metal barns where people does like mechanic work and such, and he had uh, the metal barn. That's where he did his mechanic work. So I go over there to his house and uh, knock on the door, and he answers the door, and he says, uh, yeah, he said, let me, let me show you this. It's in the barn. So we walked over to the barn, and uh, he opened up the doors and everything and, and uh, went inside, and he said, what do you think? I uh, looked at, at it, and it was a car. He had a car in there, and the car was a 1956 Ford, and I'm, like, missing, like, some, uh, missing the windshield, had a few dents in it, uh, had some, like a tail light broken out. I remember this and I had, uh, needed some work. And he told me, he says, the guy can't get this thing inspected, uh, according to the Texas inspection. So he said he wanted to get rid of it and sold it to me for 50 bucks. I asked him, I said, how, uh, is the uh, engine in it? He said, the engine is running, purring like a kitten. He said, very good engine. I said, okay. And I said, so what are we going to do with this? And he told me, he says, well, he says, this is what I plan to do with it. He said, I'm going to make a, a dirt track racer out of it. And my brother, he's a ace mechanic, knew, uh, knew everything about mechanic work, uh, was an expert welder. Uh, in fact, I think my, be uh, my brother, and I'm not bragging on him, I think he was the best uh, welder uh, in the city. I really do. Because all his welds, whenever I saw it, and he was explaining to me, I don't know nothing about welding, but he said, you got to get the bead right. He said, you got to bead it. He said, you got to make the beads right. He said, he said, if they're not right, he's not going to hold it. He said, you got to make them perfect. And that's what my brother did. He made, uh, made the uh, welding, I mean, he would weld stuff perfect. And uh, so he said, the uh, uh, thing is, he says, I will build the car. He said, if you'll drive it. Well, I've been out to that dirt track race, and I'm like, these guys are going crazy with it. I saw them bouncing off the wall, rolling the things over and everything. And uh, he said, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know. Never been in a, a situation like this where I'm going to be driving around a track. Uh, made of dirt and clay, but I said, man, what the heck? I said, I'll drive it. You know, I only live once. 
only died once, you know. But I said, yeah, let's do it. So he went ahead and, and uh, had a smile on his face. I remember a big old smile. And he says, I'll get started on it. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and crack myself a Lone Star here. Pour it. And then we'll continue with the story. Got to have a Lone Star beer when you're telling a, a dirt track racing story. At least down here in uh, Tornado Alley, Texas, that's the way it works. So anyway, he uh, was building on the car. I went over and helped him. Uh, don't get me wrong. And uh, he put me a, built me a full cage, row cage in it. And the thing what he did, he took like uh, the doors off. He took, he stripped that car down. We was just to the frame. And I'm like, Jesus, we got parts everywhere here. I hope he knows how to get this thing back together. And uh, he welded the roll bar. I remember uh, I saw him and he was welding that roll bar and and, and everything. And uh, went down and got, we uh, went down and uh, bought some black pipe, uh, just uh, black pipe, and uh, welded it. I think it was like a two inch black pipe, if I'm not mistaken. And he was welding that in there and everything. It looked great. It, it had like bars in the door. Uh, if I got whacked from the door, it's not going to kill me. It, it was just uh, had a full top. It had braces to the back. Had the brace coming in from the top to the back. I mean, it was braced good. If, if I rolled that thing over, I could roll that thing 10 times and walk away. And that's why he said he wanted to do it. And uh, build it where... Uh, you know, no one's going to get hurt in it. And it was just sturdy. It sturdied up that chassis. It sturdied up that frame. And then he put uh, put it all back together and I helped him do it. And within a week's time, uh, we had had the car ready. And he shot a, a paint job to it. Uh, he had a compressor and had a paint uh, rig and, and painted it. Uh, painted uh, numbers on it and he also had two sponsors he had two sponsors for us what said uh, that uh, what he knew some guys and they uh, said that they'd go ahead and sponsor us and, and, uh, and that, that was pretty neat so uh, right off the bat we had had a couple of sponsors uh, and what a sponsor does is they help you with either uh, money or parts or whatever uh, you need and uh, one was radiator company and helped us with uh, uh, radiator, and the other one was uh, just uh, donated money and, and gave gave money to uh, to us, and it was just it's it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I really didn't know much about the racing. He seemed to know quite a bit about it, my brother. So we went ahead and uh, uh, he built that car and everything. So. Put it on a, I remember it was a Friday night and it was like 1982 during the summer and uh, loaded it on a trailer, on a car hauling trailer. Pulled it out to the track. Got over to the, the track and lowered it down, drove it. And it sounded good, uh, that engine, man, I'll tell you what, it had a 351 Cleveland in it. And that engine was, it was a screaming demon. I'll tell you what, it was a good good engine. And uh, 1956 Ford, good sturdy car. And so anyway, we was, uh, there was different divisions to the uh, racing. There was a uh, 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 Thunder Class, what was uh, kind of like a pure stock type deal. Then there was a street stock, and that was like kind of a up, up version and that's what we raced in was street stock well right off the bat street stock then there was a modified street stock uh, late model and uh, uh, super modified and then it went up from there uh, the more money you had you know the better car you had so anyway we get out there and uh, I you know uh, put on my uh, stuff I was wearing like a 
a blue jean jacket. I remember I think I had a blue jean, blue jean jacket on and uh, had, had a helmet. And the seat belts, I recall my brother uh, saying that he went down to the army surplus and got parachute cord. Uh, what it was was parachute straps. Uh, what When you jump out of airplane, the parachutes, he made a, a rig, one, one deal rig there with parachute uh, uh, straps. He said that, that that works just as good as a, like a NASCAR uh, a belt, like a seat belt. And it was nice. It went over the shoulders, you know, uh, buckled in real, real good. Had a had kind of like a racing seat. What I believe someone gave to him, or he had, I don't know. Anyway, that was welded to the floor. I remember that. And uh, it was just uh, he did a good job on it. And it was a good, sturdy car. I mean, it was built good. And uh, got over there and and. Uh, uh, went over to where the pit stewards were and, and the flagman and everything. And I walked over there and uh, uh, told him that I'm, you know, going to be in the race and everything. And he says, okay, what we're going to do is draw for numbers. And he said, the number what you draw, he says, according to the cards, will be your position. Like it'd be like lined up like number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, and so on and so on. Uh, I drew the number, and lo and behold, I'm number 25. So there are going to be 25 cars out there on the track, which is a little, little bitty old uh, quarter mile track, and I got number 25. So I'm at the very back, the very back. And I'm like, okay, well, the luck of the draw, what, what can I say? So anyway, I went up to the flag man, and uh, his name was Floyd. And I told him, I said, uh, uh, can you explain the flags to me? And he says, uh, okay. He says, uh, what do you need to know? I said, well, I need to know all of them because I, I said, this is my first time out here. I said, I don't have any idea what the flags are. And he told me, he says, okay. He says, uh, uh, green means go. I said, okay, green means go. Yellow means caution. Yellow means caution. Red means stop. Okay, red stop. Uh, crossed yellow with green means uh, that there's a car on the track, but go ahead and proceed. Okay. Uh, then there was the uh, uh, black flag, what means get off the track. You've been black flag. Then there was a white flag, means one lap to go. And uh, he explained all these uh, flags, and he said, that's all you need to know. And I told him, I said, well, I said, I, I think you might have left a, a flag out. He said, well, which one is that? I said, the checkered flag. I said, what does that mean? He said, that means that you won the race. And he says, being your first time out here, I don't think you have to worry about that one. And he kind of laughed and went on, and he says, good luck to you. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, okay. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Anyway, here I am, and, and it's time to race. And I get out there and, and uh, put on my helmet. My brother's, like, uh, outside, and he's coaching me. He says, he says, do the best you can. And he says, this car is a screaming demon. And he said, it's got a lot of power. I've got it uh, tricked out. He says, uh, so you shouldn't have any problems. I said, okay. So, anyway, I remember that uh, they said, gentlemen, start your engines. I started mine up, and it's like, uh, it's like in the middle of an earthquake. Best way to describe it is it's like, like just uh, in the middle of an earthquake, like you hear the, hear the rumble. I mean, it's just, a, I mean, all the engines and stuff. Uh, and I'm like, wow, you know, and I see this long line of cars. And then all of a sudden, uh, we start moving. And uh, we're moving out on the track. And we're all keeping together, you know, as we go around the track. And I'm, I'm like, kind of thrown off because instead of being straight, we're at an angle. Like, I'm looking like up here is the stands. 
It's that angle. Everything is banked. It's got a bank to it. The track has got a bank to it, so I'm like kind of thrown off, and I'm like, wow, that's weird. You know, I'm used to driving just straight, and now it's banked. So anyway, I'll keep up with the pack, and we're uh, down there going around. And uh, all of a sudden, he drops that uh, green flag to say go. Everybody hits the pedal to the metal, and it's like, wow, you know. And I'm like watching all these cars, and here I am driving. And uh, whenever I, 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 dr I drove the race car, I drove with one hand. I don't know, you know, some people drive two. I found it easier to drive with one. And I put the other uh, hand over here on the uh, row bar, like the row cage bar. And I'd drive with one hand and I'd steer with one hand. Like, like to me, it was easier to do that. And we went around and first, uh, uh, I think it was a, like a 25 lap race or 30, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, we went around. And I was like gaining on these people. I was like passing them. I'm like weaving in and out and stuff. And uh, got, uh, there was a, a accident what happened, like a few accidents. So we had to stop the race and, and you know, line up in the order and start. And uh, that kind of was delayed because some of them got towed off. So there was uh, a few less cars, but there's still, I think around 20 cars. But anyway, we, Go around and here I'm like like gunning it and it's like a, a race and I'm like uh, you you can't when you're when you're behind the the wheel of the car you got this mud from other cars flying in and my brother forgot to put like a screen up so I'm like getting hit with with the uh, with the debris and everything like the mud and stuff and my brother taped a bunch of uh, uh, what he called tearaways, so I could just tear the uh, tear the shield off, and he had a bunch of them taped on there on my helmet. He said, "Just tear it, you know, with the tape, just choo -choo, you know, as I as I needed it. Whenever it got too much where I can't see, just you know, do it." So anyway, I was doing that and went around, and we was like racing everything, and all of a sudden I was like in fourth place, and then I remember I was in third, then I was by in second. And I was like, wow, you know, I passed all these cars and here, uh, here I'm going. I mean, I'm like traveling uh, around this track 85, 90 miles per hour. And it's like uh, my brother uh, welded the uh, spider gears together so it's giving me a, the positive track where it's kicking the back end up. And, and instead of going around track like this, I'm sliding around like this into a slide and, and, and lining up and it's just lining me up perfect and this car is like just doing doing what it should do. And I'm like in, uh, see the first place person, I'm right behind him and he's like just, just outmaneuvering me, you know, and everything. So I see a chance, there's like three laps to go and I see a chance and I'm, I'm got it, got it gunned down good. I mean, I'm like, like really pushing it, and he he goes he goes up high, and I cut in and I cut in low, and I got ahead of him. And once I got ahead of him, that's uh, the other two laps. Then there was one lap, and then there was uh, the white flag, and I saw the white flag, and I'm like, I'm gonna win this uh, race, and that's like the adrenaline's pumping, and I cross that finish line. And I won the race, and I'm like, wow, you know, I couldn't believe it that I won the race, and it's it's just uh, really neat because uh, I pull around after everybody is like kind of getting off the track. I pull around and park right in front of the flag station, and I remember the flag man looking at me, and I told him to come on down. So. He, he climbs down off that ladder and walks over. And I told him, I said, I want the checkered flag. I want to do my victory lap. He goes up there, gets the checkered flag, hands it to me. I do my victory lap. And uh, it, it just was uh, just a good feeling. Very first race I ever raced in. And here I'm the winner. Uh, I raced out there from 82 to like 1987 and uh, had various cars and my brother did too and we raced uh, and uh, 
I just had, I had a really good time. And I have pictures what what was taken of, of the uh, car, what we had. I don't know. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. This right here is the race car. This is the very first race, and that's the way it looked. Our number was double zero. My brother said, double watt for double watt buck shotgun. And that's the first picture. And then, this is my favorite one. That's me going around with the checkered flag. And those are uh, very, very fond memories and uh, story what I've, I wanted to share with everybody and I hope you enjoyed it. I have more coming up and uh, this is just a time in my life when, when there was uh, uh, just uh, good times and uh, rowdy times and there's uh, more stories to come and I hope you enjoyed it. This is Scoggin and I appreciate all you viewers and subscribers. I uh, hope you enjoyed the story and y'all take care.